Hey, how's it going everyone, and welcome back, I'm Martin. So, this week is the fourth and final raid of Wrath of the Machine for the weekly featured raid, and that means the final four exotic raid primaries are now available to obtain from the challenge modes. The challenge modes are still the same as they were originally, nothing has changed. For Vosik, you have to use all four of the safe rooms and use the two bombs that drop to activate the shield. So, that means you're going to have to do at least two cycles to complete this challenge. And the other challenges for Axis, the Empower players must activate the Supercharge every time the other Empower player goes to slam Axis's back. Unfortunately, if you are attempting to do the Axis challenge with an LFG group or something, it is going to be extremely brutal because you have to be almost pinpoint precise with the timings of the dunks. And even if you're a second late, then you miss your chance and just have to wipe and start over. Luckily, we got some practice in beforehand and completed the raid on all three characters in a reasonable amount of time. So, starting with my Titan at Vosik, I got the main weapon that I was looking for, that is the Scout Rifle Chaos Dogma. Then at Axis, I got the Hand Cannon Fever and Remedy. Then onto my Hunter from Vosik, I got the Pulse Rifle Steel Medulla. And at Axis, I got the Auto Rifle Genesis Chip. Fortunately, I managed to get all four of the exotics in just two runs, so the other exotics that I got on my third run were just duplicates. I got the Fever and Remedy again, as well as the Chaos Dogma. So, as I said, these are the final four exotic raid elemental primaries for the collection. We have the Pulse Rifle, which does Void Damage, the Scout Rifle, which does Arc Damage, the Hand Cannon, which does Solar Damage, and the Auto Rifle, which also does Solar Damage. And these are going to be some excellent weapons to use in PvE. Definitely some of the best weapons that you could pick if we're strictly talking about primaries here. These weapons by default were already really good weapons to use, even without their burns, particularly the scout rifle and the auto rifle. But now the fact that they also have elemental damage on top of that makes them ridiculously good. Definitely some top options here. With all of the exotic raid elemental primaries here now available, you have a lot of options to pick from, like you have this hand cannon which does solar damage, and we have this pulse rifle which does void damage, and this is a much needed weapon because there isn't really a lot of options for void primaries. There's the word of Crota hand cannon from Crota's end, which it's okay, but it's nothing too special other than the fact that it has void damage. If it didn't have that, then it would be useless. And the only other Void option would have been the Atheon Epilogue from the Vault of Glass, which, again, isn't terrible, but outside of the Vault of Glass, it's not exactly a great option. There is also the Doom of Chelchis, which does Void damage now, the King's Fall Scout Rifle, but it's also not that great of an option, mainly just because, I mean, the King's Fall weapons in general are pretty lacklustre, and they also take like six years to reload. So, now that we have the Steel Medulla, which does Void Damage, this is definitely going to be a weapon that you'll want in your collection. The special perk on this weapon is called Sign of Four. Landing three bursts on a target causes the fourth burst to do extra damage. Then we have the Scout Rifle Chaos Dogma. This is one of the top primaries that you can have due to its DPS potential against bosses. Firstly, you have the triple tap perk, rapidly landing precision hits will return one round to the magazine. Then on top of that, you have the special perk of this weapon, triple double. When triple tap perk is triggered, an extra bullet is transferred from your reserves to the magazine. Basically, in short, this allows you to continuously fire this weapon without having to reload for quite a long time, so long as you're constantly hitting precision hits, which makes it perfect for doing damage against bosses. Then we have the Hand Cannon, Fever and Remedy. Honestly, this was never really that amazing of an option. It was nothing really too special. But now the fact that it's got solar damage does make it somewhat usable now. And it's actually kind of a nice option for PvE. Just gives you, you know, another option really. And it's just going to be nice to have a solar hand cannon. All the special perk does on this weapon is really just give you an increased agility whilst reactive reload is active. Genesis Chain is also going to be kind of a nice option, just for things like Solar Burn, Nightfalls or Strikes or whatever you're doing. Although, really, if you've got something like Yellowhorn or Sleeper Simulant, I can't really imagine someone equipping this auto rifle over those. The two main perks on this weapon are Focused Fire. When zoomed, this weapon fires slower, but causes additional damage. And Focused Firefly. When Focused Fire is active, 
Precision kills cause the target to explode. So yeah, nothing too special, nothing too unique by comparison, but it's definitely a nice weapon. So that is just a brief rundown of these four elemental primaries. I did also get a couple of other goodies from this raid. The first thing being this shader that I'm currently wearing. This is the Weldfire shader. You get this, or you have a chance of getting this from defeating Axis in the challenge mode. So it's kind of a rare shader and it just turns you into this ridiculously bright glowing orange colour. But I kind of like it. At least I like it with this armor set with the Wrath of the Machine ornaments equipped, but on other armor sets, I'm not too huge of a fan, but on this set, I actually kind of like it. It kind of goes nicely with these crazy particle effects going on around the armor. Then from one of the chests, I got this Sparrow. This is the XV2 Replicator, and when you inspect it, it just looks really bland. It doesn't do anything. However, when you actually take this thing for a spin in-game, it actually looks pretty crazy. It has these cool particle effects running along the sparrow. It's kind of like some of the SRL sparrows, except with more of a SIVA theme to it. So that's pretty cool. I'm actually really happy about getting the sparrow and the shader there. Other than that, there isn't really too much new stuff to show from this. The armor is just the same Wrath of the Machine armor. However, with Age of Triumph, they did add a second ornament slot, which is the ornaments that I've currently got equipped on my Titan, and it's basically the same effect for the other classes as well. But other than that, there isn't any new armor sets from this raid, so there isn't too much else to show from this. So that is going to be it for this video. I do hope that you enjoyed this. Let me know if you've done this raid, let me know if you've done the challenge mode, and what kind of loot that you've gotten from this. If you haven't done it yet, let me know if you plan to, and if so, what are you looking to get out of the raid? Any of the new exotic elemental primaries? Any armor or a sparrow shader? Anything like that? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. Likes are greatly appreciated, and I'll talk to you next time.